The pandemic caused a lot of tough decisions to be made in 2020. Summer camps were also forced to make the call not to open, but a study from the American Camp Association later found that of the 486 camps that did operate, less than 1% of campers or staff contracted COVID. That news leading to camps like Camp Wapsie deciding it's time to bring campers back. But as Iowa's News Now anchor Symphony Sherman shows us in this special report, there will be some obvious changes in place. For the last year, the sound of birds chirping and leaves blowing in the wind is all you've heard throughout Camp Wapsie. It was just so, so heartbreaking for us to not be able to have kids on camp, and it was so quiet and so weird not having kids here. But soon, <coughs> bells will once again ring through the grounds. <coughs> and eager campers like Michaela Nilsson will be welcomed back. I've loved going to camp. It feels like a second home to me. Like the atmosphere is just a wonderful place to be. And when they told us that we were going to be able to go back this year, it was just like an ecstatic emotion for me. Michaela waited months last year to hear if Camp Wapsie was still happening and sadly got the news it wasn't, which is why camp means more to Michaela than ever before. I think that it's a really important thing for especially the younger kids and us older kids to be able to just see people in person, interact with them instead of just us being on our phones and just texting each other. But camp means sleeping in close quarters with others, which has staff at Camp Wapsie getting creative to make sure kids are safe. These blue dots on the bunks, um, that's where heads are going to go. So head to toe um, so that they're able to keep six foot distance between each camper while they're sleeping. We're also limiting capacity. There are six bunks in here with 12 beds. And if you ever went to camp, you know a big part of that is the dining hall. But instead of a packed room filled with chanting campers, tables will be spaced out and campers will stick with their cabin mates. Typically in years past, we can fit about 300 people in our in our dining hall at once for all of our meals. Uh, this year, obviously that's not safe. So we're gonna be doing about 100, 125 people per shift for meals. And right outside the dining hall, you'll find a unique hand washing station. And all of these changes have Michaela's mom and volunteer camp nurse confident her kids will be safe. For me, there was no hesitation. You know, it was, I think, you know, with the protocols that they'll have in place and, you know, with the, you know, counselors getting, you know, vaccinated and the staff, like me as the nurse being vaccinated, um, you know, I think that it'll be great. And for Michaela, she's just happy to be back to some sense of normalcy. It's just something that I think everybody is really looking forward to and just an amazing opportunity to be able to go back this year. Symphony Sherman, Iowa's News Now. Welcome back. Marion's new School of Rock is ready to shred up the town. The grand opening took place today. Iowa's News Now photojournalist Morgan Ward takes us to the rocking studios where students of all ages can let their creativity flow. It's really important to both of us that kids get that that musical background and get that um, artistic outlet to be able to to learn. It's really good to like be good at something to get into something and a lot of people sometimes don't have that you know you have to have something so I think that's just hope you can do that for the community. One of my favorite things about teaching is that moment when they just like find it. The biggest thing is we want them to develop a joy of music. Um, this whole thing is about not just taking lessons for the sake of learning to play scales but actually to be able to play songs to be able to be in a band and to be able to work with other students in that sort of a situation. He takes students of all ages. We have a student who's 80 years old and learning the keyboard for the first time playing with our adult band. I just love this program so much. I'm excited to see where it goes. The sky's the limit.
It always takes one and one person that can't walk away. As soon as we could, we said we want to adopt her. A kitten receives a Christmas miracle months after the holiday. Her name is Nima, and she was discovered Christmas Day by Joanne and Mick McNeil. Nima was suffering severe injuries all over her small body, and the couple feared she wouldn't survive. But they reached out to local animal shelters, and two came to the rescue. Critter Crusaders of Cedar Rapids and Saint Rescue joined together to help the family and little Nima. One extensive surgery and three months later, she's happy and healthy. And the McNeil say they couldn't be more grateful to the medical teams. We saw how, how injured she was. It was really distressing. Um, so we just wanted her to get care. And uh, these guys, these miracle workers did it. We have one goal, and that's to return these animals to health and give them a happy forever home. Speaking of that, more good news. Nima has found her forever home, too, with who else but the McNeils. For more information on her story or to see how you can help an animal find a home, go to our website, iowasnewsnow.com. Workers at the Raining Rose Manufacturing Office in Cedar Rapids today received vaccinations. 185 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine were given out. The shots were administered by employees of Unity Point Health Work Well Solutions clinic. Rainy Rose meets the state vaccination criteria for phase 1B tier 1. The employees work in a manufacturing setting side by side making products used by consumers. It uh, feels a little bit more satisfying to know we're moving forward and we're actually getting people vaccinated and we're, might, we're headed out of the tunnel, we're headed into some better era, you know, we're finally going to get people vaccinated and get people moving and get people safe and it sounds like we're moving forward. Unity Point Health Work Well offers vaccinations for business and manufacturing all throughout the corridor. Well, new today, the Nubo City Market will now undergo a massive renovation. This is all in response to new local businesses wanting to open up there. Two businesses will open in the spring, and really this is the first major upgrade to the facility since it opened back in 2012. That was after the flood. The goal is to complete this project before peak season in April should be done by the end of March, maybe first week of April, but we've got a pretty tight schedule and we're, we've got everybody lined up and all the workers ready to go. So yeah, it should move along quickly. A lot of excitement around this. Some of the new businesses include hand dyed clothing and retail items for crafting and sewing. Thank you so much. New today, food banks still in need of donations because of COVID-19. We now know about 42 million people may experience food insecurity this year, but today, a local milk brand is helping be part of the solution by donating 35,000 giving cow milk cartons to the Hawkeye Area Community Action Program that's in Hiawatha for their backpack program and community members. Regular milk is great and everybody loves regular milk, uh, but it does have a timeline on it. So having shelf stable milk allows us to use it for programs like the backpack program or get it into communities where you know, or families that maybe don't have refrigeration or not as much space. It allows, um, it allows us to be more versatile with providing that milk protein for families. Giving cow milks are single serve eight ounce packs of ultra high temperature pasteurized milk have a shelf life of up to 12 months while typically fresh milk only has a shelf life of 20 days. Several local cities lifting socks when he was a baby. Mm -hmm. I saw my dad too, right? A lot of hair. Yep, that's him. Tyona Allers is holding on to memories of her late son. It was his first year at tackle football. He was going to college at Kirkwood. Someone shot and killed Keyshawn Allers last July in southwest Cedar Rapids. Nearly seven months have passed and still no answers. I, I don't really know the motive yet. Keyshawn's death marked a homicide record for the city in 2020. There's just so, it's so much gun violence. It never used to happen in Cedar Rapids. Ten lives lost to gunfire. The other victims aren't strangers to this family. Judea that got killed. You got Levi Holty. I mean, these are all kids that my kids grew up with. $10,000 is now on the line for the person who can help solve this crime. I need a little bit of closure. I always thought, like, whoever killed my son, I wanted death on them, you know, like, but I wouldn't want them to go through what I'm going through. It's hell. It's, it's not fun. It's, you're supposed, I'm supposed to die before my son. So now, this family continues to wait, 
holding on to each other tighter than ever before. Everywhere Keyshawn went, Aaliyah went. Since my brother died, my sisters are like the closest thing to me. That was her best friend. Karen, this is the pond where that body was found Monday night, but now all that remains of that massive police presence is some leftover caution tape. Now things are turning to finding out who this is. We, of course, don't know the identity of the body that was found, even uh, an approximate age or sex. The body was found by fishermen Monday night who immediately reported it. We spoke to some people in town who didn't want to go on camera, but said a discovery like this is tough. It will mean answers, but also heartbreak for a family. Davenport police were called in to the investigation by the Clinton County Sheriff's Office as there is an ongoing missing persons case in that city. Also knowing that uh, we've been conducting an investigation for some 10 months uh, on a missing young lady, uh, so we're certainly interested in this uh, discovery as well. We try our best to get the identification done as quickly and efficiently as possible. And so at this point, we're estimating, or at least hoping anyway, that will be anywhere between a week to two weeks at best because these things take time and we want to make sure that they are done correctly. Iowa's News Now also reached out to the Clinton County Sheriff's Office and Davenport Police. We'll keep you updated if we learn any new information. In DeWitt, Shannon Mowdy, Iowa's News Now. Iowa's News Now reporter Dion Broxton is outside what is now LaSalle Middle School on the northwest side. Dion, it doesn't seem to matter where Sergeant Smith was, he left an impression everywhere he went. Mitch, we know that Sergeant Jim Smith grew up going to Catholic schools here on the west side of town before moving north for a career in law enforcement. Whether it be here or Buchanan and the Fayette counties, he left a legacy. Flowers, small flags, and big ones at half staff litter Iowa State Patrol's District 10 office. Remembering Sergeant Jim Smith, the trooper lost his life in a shootout Friday night in Grundy Center. Now loved ones are left laying signs of love. A lot of people brought flowers to remember State Trooper Jim Smith, but one woman brought something different. Jim liked the Minnesota Vikings, so I thought it'd be nice to bring him out something, and I knew there'd be a lot of flowers, so I thought that'd be a nice keepsake for him. The loss hits close for Robin Ike. Um, I was a trooper's wife for 35 years, so my husband worked with Jim for like 20 years. Now Ike is left with memories of the 27-year veteran. And David had just talked to him last week, and Jim would stop and see David and stuff like that. So he was a good guy. He really was. Like when Smith showed up to her husband's state trooper retirement party. But the thought is bittersweet now. Jim's not going to get a retirement party. She, like many others in the old wine and independence communities, wish they could give him one last hug. I, I didn't mean to make you cry. I'm oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I I'm cry. Sorry. Sergeant Smith's car was outside of District 10's headquarters and all one so people can le keep leaving flowers and memorials ahead of Thursday's visitation and Friday's funeral. Both of those are in independence. Live in Cedar Rapids, Dion Broxton, Iowa's News Now. Well, Christopher, if you are in this terminal, you must wear a mask. And actually, the Eastern Iowa Airport was the first airport in Iowa to require them earlier this year. Thanksgiving and spring break in March, those are our two busiest times. But this year, the Eastern Iowa Airport anticipates travel to be 50% lower than normal. You're seeing a lot of decreased travel in airports and on buses, trains, cruises, obviously. But that doesn't mean that people aren't traveling. People like the Durrance family. They flew in from Sebring, Florida to spend Thanksgiving with family here in the Hawkeye State. I feel like it was important. We pushed off a lot of travel and a lot of time together and we uh, took the opportunity this time to do it. The decision to travel this year is very individualized. It's a very personal thing, and it's something that every American needs to take very seriously and consider the pros and cons of going out this travel, uh, going out and traveling this holiday season. The Durans family says they all tested negative before the trip and aren't seeing family members with any pre-existing conditions. We took into consideration that if it extends longer, you know, does the risk outweigh the benefits? The airport says it's doing what they can to keep travelers safe from COVID. We have a dedicated maintenance crew that has always been, you know, handled the maintenance and cleanliness of the airport, but we increase that so the high touch point areas get a little more attention. Employees have to do wellness checks before reporting to duty. 
everyone has to check their temperature before and after their shift. If, if it's over the 100.4, you have to report it immediately. It's extra precautions like these that made the Durans family comfortable to travel. Certainly everything's scary around, but certainly we did want to just, we felt like it was just important to see family. Although Cedar Rapids Airport isn't seeing much foot traffic, more than 1 million travelers pass through security checkpoints at U.S. airports on both Friday and Sunday, according to the TSA. Overall, AAA expects 2.5 million travelers over the Thanksgiving holiday nationwide. Live in Cedar Rapids, Emily Chavez, Iowa's News Now.